Well, hey folks, welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, one of the questions that I get asked a lot still is, uh, do I use my uh, Air X 400 watt wind turbine, which I installed on my cabin, oh, about eight years ago I installed this. Well, there is my 400 uh, Air X wind turbine, it's a 12 volt wind turbine. As you can see, we've got just a tiny little breeze blowing through here. And this is installed and has been there for now eight years uh, and working. And I've never had to do anything to it uh, since I put it up there. I've never touched it at all since I put it up there, uh, other than I rerouted the wiring to a different battery. And this is hooked to, I've used uh, conduit, which is made for uh, fence posts, steel, steel conduit, I think it was like a 1.5 inch, and I put, uh, it's a, like a 25 foot rail, one solid rail that I used up either 25 or 30 foot, I think it's 25 foot. And I just mounted it, attached it to the old power pole that was here. Now this power pole is no longer hooked to the power. As you can see the wires, which called the loop, the loop is down there and is, is just leaning against the pole. When there was a trailer here that belonged to my brother, he had power installed here. Then they came and took out the transformer. And so I was left, I own the pole and I own the loop because I traded him pr properties. And so I used that power pole to mount an antenna and to mount my wind turbine. However, this wind turbine only produces when we get lots and lots of wind, which we don't get great wind here. And so it only produces uh, mostly in winter when I get pretty decent storms, it will produce somewhat. However, when it does w produce, it produces a lot of power. It can actually recharge my entire battery system in less than an hour because it produces so much power. But 99.9% .9 of my power comes from my 400 watt uh, solar panel system, which I've talked about before. That's four 100 watt Renogi mono panels, and those go to uh, three 135 amp hour uh, gel cell batteries, VMAX tank gel cell batteries. And then this year, because we've been having such hot weather, and it's really hot, it's over 100 degrees here right now. I also got two more 100 watt panels. Those are two 100 watt panels that I'm using uh, with a LifePo 4 battery to run my Hess Air Swamp Cooler. It takes about 85 watts when it's running. And so that is used just to run my swamp cooler. It doesn't run anything else right now. And then I also have uh, a little 20 watt solar panel right there, which I use all the time. In the wintertime, I use that to keep my trucks charged up. But right now I'm using it to recharge a 100 watt uh, Renogi gel cell battery, that and the wind turbine are both hooked into a 100 watt uh, Renogi battery that I use for a recharging station just for tools, cell phones, laptops, things like that. So yes, my system is still working. It's still, uh, I still have the wind turbine. It still works as well as can be expected uh, in this area because we just don't get enough wind. Most of the time that wind turbine looks exactly like that. It's pretty, but it's doing absolutely nothing to produce any power. Solar produces much, much more power. And so I recommend for most people that you go with solar first, and then if you want to experiment with wind and you think you get enough wind that you might make it worth it, then you can experiment and put in some wind. So uh, in this next part of this video, I'm actually going to show you my old video that I made of the installation of this wind turbine uh, about eight years ago. And you will notice something right away. I was a lot younger and a lot handsomer back then. All right, folks, have a great day. Well, hi, folks, and welcome to Homesteader News. This is the last in the video series on the off-grid solar and wind power installation. Now, we put a lot of information into these videos, uh, and we've tried to, do, to cover everything, but it's not possible in a video to cover everything that, that's involved in putting one of these systems together. So I'd really suggest that this book, Off-Grid Solar Power, it goes with the video series. That's what it was designed for. This book has the uh, worksheets for sizing your system. It has all the technical information for all the connections. It helps you to decide what equipment would work best for your application. Uh, it includes information on how to get the state and federal rebates. Uh, it has the uh, maps and things like that in it so that you can go determine if wind would work best for you and how to place your solar equipment. Also includes information on how to reduce the size of your uh, power system by reducing your needs by using propane, natural gas, and wood power. This book is will really help you and it would help you with the video series if you're considering installing solar power and wind power. We're going to make this available to anybody that wants it for a donation. All you got to do is go to my website www.simpsolarhomesteading.com. At the top of the page you'll see a link that says off-grid solar power ebook. Click on that. You decide how much the information is worth to you. Then we will send you a link and you can download the entire book. It's an ebook and it's completely printable. 
You can print out the, just the sections, the worksheets and stuff you want, or you can print out the entire ebook if you want. Okay, so we're going to make that available. Again, it's at www.simpsolarhomesteading.com. Now, a little bit about Homesteader News. Uh, we're not a business or we're not a for-profit organization. We're just a couple of old guys that like to share our information with other people, and uh, we don't do it for the money. In fact, if you notice, I don't have any of those funky Google ads at the bottom of my screen. That's because I won't advertise for any business company or product that I don't personally use. If I put a uh, mention in for a business or a product in my videos, it's because I actually purchase from those businesses. I use their equipment. I trust them, so I feel comfortable referring them to you. Uh, all the, any money that we receive in the way of donations is it goes back into producing projects to help everybody else. Uh, we use that for the simple equipment and paying for the websites and the download time for the bandwidth, that sort of thing. That's where that money goes. We're not a business. We're not in it for the profit. So we appreciate the donations that you do send us. That keeps us going. And if you enjoy the videos, we appreciate that too. I would suggest that you subscribe to my videos. That way you can stay on top of when, it, when we're producing new videos. Just go to my YouTube site, Solar Cabin. Subscribe there, and then you'll be notified when we're producing new videos. Now, we're going to be installing this wind turbine today. And there's some important points I want to uh, get out to you. Uh, one is, uh, some counties have still not accepted wind turbines. Uh, uh, they're still a new technology for a lot of places. They're not real comfortable yet just letting anybody put one up, especially in cities and towns. So if you're considering putting up a wind turbine, the first thing you need to do is go to your county or possibly your state offices, see what restrictions might be uh, placed on putting in wind turbines. Uh, and just make sure that you're okay in putting up a wind turbine. Uh, there's some confusion out there about how much noise they're going to make, are they going to kill all the birds and bats. Well, the evidence so far shows that there isn't any real significant wind put or noise put off from a wind turbine, and they don't kill any amount of birds or bats any more different than what your local uh, residential cats do, okay? So there isn't much problem there, but you may have to convince your county offices that it's okay for you to put up a wind turbine, so make sure you do that first. Uh, you, the second point I want to point out is safety, safety, safety. You're going to be putting up a wind turbine 35, 40 feet up in the air, and you need to, to really be careful when you go doing that. They make towers with guide wires. That would be the uh, usual way to mount a system. Now, I'm going to be mounting mine on a, an existing power pole. However, that power pole does not have power to it. The transformer's been removed. There's no power uh, running through those wires. Even though you see those wires still attached to that pole, there's no power to that pole. That's the only reason that I'm doing it. I own that pole. It's on my property. Absolutely do not put a wind turbine up on a power pole on your property uh, that has power running to it that you don't own. That would be extremely dangerous. Please do not do something like that. So as you're watching my video, just be aware that that power pole that I'm working at doesn't have any power attached to it. All right, folks, we're going to get out there and we're going to install this wind turbine. Again, please visit my websites uh, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you stay on top of the video. So let's get out there and install that turbine. Okay, folks, here we are outside. We're looking at the AirX wind turbine that I received from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Uh, this is a 400-watt wind turbine. Of course, the first thing I do is I uh, look in the box, make sure there was no damage in shipping. Everything looks like it arrived okay. Now, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the AirX wind turbine. The reason I chose this model is because they've been in business for a long time producing wind turbines, about 20 years. Uh, they've worked out all the bugs in their wind turbines. Uh, there are other models out there available, and AirX also makes uh, some different models. Uh, but there's some features about an AirX that I really like, and I'll explain those once we get this out and, and uh, put together. Uh, but uh, the reason I chose the AirX is because they have been around a long time. Uh, their system has, has been used in residences all over the world. And so I know that uh, they're, they're also produced here in the United States, so I know that I can get parts uh, if anything breaks down on a system like this. They also have a very good technical staff that can help you. Uh, one of the things that you want to do, the first thing you want to do is get out your instruction manual. Uh, and the instruction manual should be included with your air turbine and you want to look at and read through the instructions very carefully. There isn't a lot to putting together the wind turbine. Basically what you're going to be doing is uh, putting the turbine blades onto a hub that attaches to the turbine, but they need to be torqued down to a certain specification, so you want to make sure that you're following the directions. Uh, they also give you a lot of information for towers, uh, how to set them up on a tower, how far away the tower should be from the house, how to set the guide, guide wires if you're using guide wires. I won't be using guide wires because I'm going to be using an existing pole, but if you're going to be using 
using a pole, towers, guidelines, you need to follow the directions very carefully. Don't, don't just wing this. Uh, make sure you read the directions and follow the directions. So the next step will be that I'm going to take this turbine out of the box and I'm going to attach the blades to the, the turbine and we'll show you how that process goes. Okay folks, here I've uh, installed the uh, wind turbine blades to the hub and uh, this is a pretty uh, self-explanatory process. Just follow the directions. On the Air X, uh, as you can see what they have uh, is some hex head bolts that go through the front and there's two in each blade and then they attach in the back. If we can get around here we'll show you. They attach in the black back of the blade. Uh, they have uh, a uh, nut that goes on the back side of those bolts and uh, they just go through you just have to make sure that you align the blade so that the slot that the bolt goes through is on the the front and then it locks to the hub with a large nut uh, and that's you just put that into that slot it's made to hold the nut and then that uh, uh, screws down onto the hub and as you're putting that on all you do is you need to use a hex head uh, wrench and and uh, Air X includes the head, hex head wrenches. You can see they include both of the hex head wrenches that you need, and you want to tighten those down to the specified torque that they say, uh, and uh, make sure that everything's nice and tight. They also include if you're going to be putting this into a uh, uh, boat application or someplace where you're going to be getting salt water on this, they include this uh, special uh, Teflon. Uh, goo that you put on there, a Teflon gel goo that you want to put on the screws uh, to help protect them from any salt water or anything like that. Uh, we're not going to be uh, applying that in uh, our situation because we, we're out in Utah. There's any sea or ocean anywhere near around here. So we don't need that. But they include that if you're going to be using it in an area where you might get salt water on the system. That's about it. The installation was very basic. Install the blades exactly the way the directions say. Uh, these blades are made of a, a uh, polymer uh, composition uh, very strong they're very, also very flexible so they can flex in the wind uh, but they won't break okay and they seem kind of thin but that's actually the design they're, they're tested in uh, wind chambers uh, and most of your blades are going to look something like this to kind of look like funky short swords or something uh, but what they are is they're made to cut into the wind to get the the maximum uh, speed out of even small winds and so they they're designed specifically for that. Now some turbines might come with more blades than this. This is a three uh, blade turbine. Some turbines might have five or six blades or even more, uh, but three blade turbines are very common. Uh, and there's some benefit they say to having more turbine blades, but uh, so far the research shows a three blade turbine will still get uh, uh, the most out of the wind. So that's the setup. You can see there's wires coming out of the end of it there. So now I'm going to show you how this is attached to a pipe and then we're going to be ready to put that up on my pole. Okay folks, I now have the wind turbine uh, connected to some Schedule 40 one and a half inch pipe. Uh, and that's what's recommended for this system. And what these have is they have a uh, rotating cuff that when you tighten it down with these screws uh, then it connects to the top of that pipe. Uh, there's three wires coming out of the wind turbine. There's a positive wire, a negative wire, and a neutral wire. If you're going to be grounding your wind turbine uh, directly uh, beneath the tower, then you would use the neutral wire for that. Uh, otherwise, you can connect the neutral wire to the negative wire as one wire, and uh, those will run to your battery bank, and you can ground the system right there directly at the battery bank. I connected the two together for this system. I'll be grounding them at the battery bank rather than right at the tower. However, that wire is there if you want to use it for that. Uh, these are just hex head bolts that go through the collar, uh, and as you screw them down, they tighten up against that collar, and it holds it securely. So then you need to run your wires through your conduit, your pipe, and uh, what I'm using here is uh, some 8 gauge wire, uh, coming out of the bottom of the pipe and I've left me enough length to run that over to the shed. Now uh, the book recommends what wire size you should use. Your instruction will recommend what wire size you should use for the length of the run. The longer the run from the wind turbine to your battery bank, the heavier the gauge you're going to want to use. Uh, for my run, it recommends 8 gauge. That's what we're going to be using. If you're going to be running the distance much longer, because you are, remember, working with DC power, then you're going to want a, a heavier gauge wire. And, and the farther away from your bank is, the heavier the gauge that you need to go with. Follow the recommendations that are in the instruction manual for the gauge. Okay, we now have this uh, turbine blades and everything on. The only thing I have to do is attach that nose cap right there. 
and it just clips on, snaps on in place. Uh, and the, the wind turbine is ready to go. So you can see that putting the wind turbine together, really no big hassle. Anybody should be able to do it. Uh, attach it to your Schedule 40 pipe. And I'm using a piece of uh, five foot Schedule 40 pipe. And then I'm using these uh, special made uh, braces that go over the top of the pipe. And they just uh, slip over the top of the pipe. And then those will use, will use some heavy duty cement coated screws to screw that to that pole. Now, there's the pole that's going up. Uh, and it's about 30 feet up in the air and you can see I'm going up a ladder not really the recommended way I would suggest doing this uh, a better way would be to have somebody with a cherry picker bucket truck come up and take you up in a bucket and install that up there however I don't have that option here today so I'm gonna be installing that from a ladder but I do have that ladder secure and I got some people coming over here to help me I drove in a couple of fence steel fence posts next to the bottom of the ladder to keep the ladder from shifting at all and now I'm gonna go tie that ladder about every six rungs I'm gonna tie that ladder to that post and then I've also tied some of those rungs together just to make sure that because that's an extension ladder uh, it won't slip and then I'm going to be wearing a harness and because I used to do some mountain climbing and rappelling, I've been up high and rappelled down from high heights, so I'm a little bit more comfortable going up at these heights and working. I would not recommend that for the average person. I would recommend a bucket truck to take you up there to put it on a pole like that, or to use the pole mounting system. You attach the wind turbine at the ground, and then you tip the pole up into place uh, if you're going to be using that type of system. Okay, so now I need to make, go make sure that ladder's secure, and then I'm going to haul that wind turbine up there and attach it to the pole. Okay folks, we've got the air X up and installed at the top of the pole and uh, we've got a pretty decent little breeze. I would say we're doing about 10 to 15 miles per hour and as you can see it's just spinning this little heart out. It kind of searches for the wind, it'll turn a little bit this direction, a little bit that direction to track the wind. Uh, I can tell you there's not much noise to them at all, uh, just a little bit of a whistling noise, uh, nothing that would disturb you. Now my pole is kind of close to my house, closer actually than I'd like it. I'd like it to be farther away from the house, but sometimes you have to deal with what you have. And uh, now as the wind dies down, it shuts itself down, and then it'll start back up as soon as that wind starts blowing again. See how it turns a little bit into the wind? Catches the wind. As it comes from a different direction, then it'll start up turning again. And uh, I checked, uh, I haven't got an amp meter on it yet, but I checked it, it's producing pretty decent power at about 12-15 uh, miles per hour wind uh, but we'll get an amp meter on it and I'll tell you exactly how much it's producing and uh, it has these uh, Air X's have a uh, brake system in them and so they can tell when the batteries are full they will uh, put that brake on so that they're not overproducing and, and re overcharging your batteries uh, or if you can also use that as a cutoff switch if necessary to stop the blades uh, from spinning if you had to do some maintenance on your batteries or something like that. So that's the Air X, folks. It's, so far it's working real good. I will get an amp meter on there so I can tell exactly how many amps it's putting out at what wind speed uh, so I can give you a little bit better idea of what it produces. Now that's the Air X 400 watt wind turbine uh, and I got this one from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun.